We now turn our attention to Ukraine. It's been weeks since Moscow launched a full-scale attack on its neighbor. Despite efforts to deter further onslaughts, attacks still continue. Our Song Eugin is standing by on the line with the leaders. Eugin, do fill us in. Well, Daniel, it's now three weeks into the invasion, and with attacks intensifying, South Korea's foreign ministry just announced it is closing the temporary embassy office in the city of Lviv. Embassy personnel have been working in Lviv, Chernivtsi, and Romania after they pulled out from the capital, Kiev. Citing escalating military threats, the ministry said it will help move embassy staff and South Korean residents who wish to leave. Embassy operations will now take place only in Romania and Chernivtsi. Over in the southern city of Mariupol, a Russian plane bombed a theater on Wednesday local time, which, according to the city's deputy mayor, was sheltering 1,000 to 2,000 people. Satellite images show that the word children was spelled out on two sides of the building before it was bombed. But the exact number of casualties remains unknown. And so far, has there been any noteworthy response from the international community? Well, Ukraine has been going all out to urge the international community to do more. Just Wednesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky gave a virtual address to U.S. Congress appealing that Ukraine needs their help right now. In the darkest time for a country, for the whole of Europe, I urge you to do more. New packages of sanctions are needed every week until the Russian military machine stops. Restrictions are needed for everyone on whom this unjust regime is based. And according to White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki, President Biden will speak with Chinese President Xi Jinping on Friday on issues of mutual concern, which includes Russia's war against Ukraine. Meanwhile, to talk about the figure behind the attacks, there is growing suspicion from the West about Russian President Vladimir Putin's health. British newspaper The Telegraph reported on Wednesday local time that people who have been watching Putin since 2000 have said he seems, quote, bloated, irrational, and lacking the cold control he had shown before. These comments come after an angry outburst from Putin after he failed to reap an expected quick victory over Ukraine. But the Kremlin on Wednesday insisted that Putin is not ill. Speaking of Russia, we also have to talk about the potential impact of the invasion on Russia's own economy. Moscow appears to be struggling to prevent its first debt default since 1998. Yes, that's right. Wednesday was the deadline for the 117 million U.S. dollar interest payments on two of Russia's dollar-denominated bonds, but multiple media reported there were no signs that the debt holders received their cash. Although Russia still has a 30-day grace period from Thursday, failing to pay or attempting to pay in rubles instead of dollars as required by the bonds could lead to a default. But Russia's finance minister, Anton Silonov, said Wednesday local time that the country had made interest payments for the two bonds in dollars. Following his statement, a spokesperson for the United States Department of Treasury told CNN that Washington would allow the payments to go through. However, even if the payments are processed, it remains unclear whether investors will actually receive their money, as the funds Russia used to make the payments came from its frozen foreign assets sanctioned due to its attack on Ukraine. That's all I have for now. Back to you, Daniel. All right, Eugene, thank you for those updates. We appreciate it.